Welcome back. So we have been in Oshun State and now we're just leaping over to South Africa. Yeah, how are we going? Do you get a visa? Or are you using the We voodoo? need visa, we need ticket. No, do we do voodoo? Let's use voodoo. Voodoo. Since the, the KBSC had just left here. <laughs> Well, South Africa is a tourist destination and uh, the industry accounts for a substantial amount of the country's revenue. It is ranked sixth out of the world's 17 mega diverse countries and is home to a large variety of animal life, as you may have seen from watching television. And uh, Nat Geo does a good job of projecting South Africa the variety of animals, the parks, and all that. Well, we had um, somebody here, I think it was two weekends ago, to tell us about Africa, South Africa. He's unrelenting because he's here again today. Tekiso Rakolojani, regional manager, South Africa Tourism West Africa, is here again today. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You are welcome. Thank you. But today he's come along with the MD of Wantra. Mrs. Fumi Faloye. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for Thank coming. Thank you. Takiso, obviously you have something new to tell us about this our trip to South Africa. <laughs> 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 so you didn't say everything the last time you came? I think today really, last time it was really about South Africa, the destination and what's on offer. Uh -huh. Today we have the benefit of having somebody with us who can now talk to the Nigerians around packages that are available to them so that they can experience what I was talking about last week. Mm. And I think really today the conversation is about what is available to us as Nigerians, how can we access it? And I think for me, one of the big highlights that I wanted to share with the viewers today is the fact that we've recently had commitments that have been made with our colleagues at the embassy around facilitation of visas, okay. specifically for those that are wanting to go into this summer, take up these summer campaigns that we are embarking on. Ah. So the packages that uh, Madam Fumi will be talking about, people should not be feeling, you know, restricted by the issues of visas. We do have a process in place that will assist them in facilitation of, you know, the quick and prompt issuance or, you know, the processing of their visas. Uh -huh. Well, um, quickly, let's go through it again, you know, as quickly as we can before we go to her. What is your mandate here as the representative of your country? Well, my mandate really is to market South Africa as a tourist destination to Nigerians. That's really it. So my aim is to get as many Nigerians as possible mm -hmm. to go and visit and experience South Africa as a tourism destination and yeah. experience the various experiences yeah. and diverse activities that we have on offer. Yeah. And I'm quite excited today to hear what uh, Madam Fumi has to share in terms of the packages she has on board. Okay. Now, Mrs. Faloye. It's summer. Yeah. Uh, no, not that it matters in Nigeria. We have sun all year round. Yeah. But it's um, year <laughs> people look for where to go this time of the year. So, um, what are the things that would make a Nigerian decide to go spend a few weeks, a few days in South Africa? Um, I think the first thing I would like to say is South Africa is the destination of choice when it comes to budget. It's um, a typical destination that fits everyone's pocket. So it's that destination. Everyone's pocket. Yes. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. <laughs> now, so it's a what typical... kind of money are you talking about okay, that so, everyone's pocket? Okay, so we're talking, you know, there's a diverse um, um, availability for you in South Africa. So there's some people that want to stop in Johannesburg. There's some people that want to go on to Durban. For me, when you talk summer, I'm thinking Durban. Durban, it's got good weather all year round. Mm -hmm. You know, Durban's got huge shopping malls. I love South Africa personally for the food because South Africa is somewhere you can feed yourself with as little as our own equivalent of 3,000 naira and get a very good food. So you're saying good food means quality food. The steak is good, you know, there's a lot for the children to do, um, from your McDonald's to your KFC. So it's, um, it's familiar, it's a familiar ground, you're not having to deal I'm with. I'm waiting to interrupt you. Yeah. Just hold on here. She said something about food. <laughs> Talk to us a little bit about South African food. Well, not to be biased, but I think Madam Fumi is right, the diversity of food, I have my own personal preference. Yeah. <laughs> The food is good. It Without is. A doubt. 
it is definitely amazing. There's, even if you say so yourself. Even if I say so myself. I think there's something for everyone. And I think most importantly for the kids, the diversity for the kids, for the family. Um, normally when we travel as well on holidays, my wife and my son, she pretty much dictates where we go because my son has a very, you know, picky palate. So we pretty much, you know, even ourselves with that sort of a very restricted way of eating, we still find something that works for us. So, Madam, okay, for someone right. like me to have a, a, a <laughs> local palate, no, I, have, I, I have a local palate and difficult. So you're saying I won't have a problem? You won't because you're looking for your chili. If you're typical Nigerian, mm. you need your pepper. And yeah. that you will definitely be getting in South Africa. And maybe, you, maybe you'll be looking for a swallow as well. Yeah. Um, remember that it's also very close to home because we have quite a number of Nigerians mm. and we have Nigerian restaurants. The clubbing, the nightlife, the, um, the parks, they're mm. very typical of a mm. Nigerian you know, destination. So mm. you're not going somewhere you're having to explain Again, to I the children. You. I interrupt you. Let me go back to Kisu. Um, <laughs> tell me about, <laughs> you know, I like this back and forth. We'll get back to that. But she talks about, she mentioned parks. Give us an idea about what the parks look like. Exactly, what the field. Well, there's diversity of parks. So it's recreational we've parks. Of, we've heard of Kruger. Yes, yeah, so there's recreational parks where it's about amenities for the family and for the children. But then you also have, if you look into wildlife as an example, there are, we do have specifically those. And I know a lot of people are well informed about the Kruger, but I'll be, you know, I'm glad to inform you that there's a vast and much more diverse types of parks. But I think in this case, um, specifically when we talk in summer and we talk in families, we would l be looking at family-friendly park, um, parks mm -hmm. and we've got quite a lot of those, particularly in the area that we're talking about today, which is Durban, which is the northern part of the country, which is very warm, um, like Madam mentioned earlier on, right throughout the year. So How the, far the, is Durban from Johannesburg? It's one hour flight. Okay. Okay. So back to you. So, if you're going as a family, Durban particularly, because you also have the beach, hmm. it's right on the water, um, the beach, so hotel, a lot of the hotels are on the beachfront. So imagine staying in a hotel on the beachfront. We're used to hotels on the beachfront being quite pricey, but that's not the case here. So you have from your three-star property on the beachfront to your four-star to your five-star right on the beachfront. The beachfront is huge. And for the shopping, because I know for a typical Nigerian going for summer, the shopping is also important. I love South African shopping because um, you do a lot of made in Africa, quality things made in Africa. Um, so you're talking food, you're talking jewelry, you're talking um, shopping for the children, you're talking parks. There's also a very good event that happens in July if you have an early summer, which is called the Durban July. Uh -huh. um, Durban July is horse racing, but it's a lifestyle event. It's more of you know, lifestyle, hangout, have fun, and those are the things you find also in South Africa. Flying the national carrier from Nigeria, it's a direct flight. So you're talking, I do a Lagos, Johannesburg. I'm in Johannesburg the next morning. I spent two nights in Johannesburg. I have a time to relax in Johannesburg. I'm in um, um, Santon Mall, or I go to the, uh, to, the, um, to the water parks all around Johannesburg. Now, Gold Reef is also in Johannesburg. So I can do two days in Johannesburg, then go on to Durban. If I'm in Durban with my family, 10 days, you're fine. Because you can do hotel apartments. You don't necessarily have to do hotels. But 10 days is a long time. How much, about, about how much would I have to pay for 10 days, including my flight? If you're doing a 10-day package with a family of four, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. your total package can come to about a million naira. So you're talking 250,000 wow. per person. I think that's but a fantastic days. deal. Plus flight. Plus flight. Now, what is the catch here? You need to be booking your packages early. Okay. You need to be booking your summer early. So you need to give yourself two months, three months planning time. The so run is also very, March, you start April. booking. Uh -huh. No, so now summer you can start booking now. This is June. So you can be booking your August summer. You can still book your um, Dublin July. You can book mm -hmm. September because a lot of schools we do meet September. Mm -hmm. So you can still take two weeks in September. Now, okay, South Africa, it's, I mean, the picture you both are painting is just so rosy. But some people hear South Africa and they immediately stiffen up. Is that not the country where they have been killing Nigerians? Would be the first question that will come to their mm -hmm. mind. So talk to us about the hospitality of the people okay. in South Africa. I'll talk about South Africa as a Nigerian, because I'm sure he will talk about South Africa as a South African. Yes. And say, no, there's no problem. I go to South Africa at least twice a year. 
I've been to Durban, I've been to Johannesburg, I've been to Cape Town. In particular, I love Cape Town. You know, I've been on family vacation in Cape Town where you rent villas, and we don't have a security guard at the gate like I would have at home. And it's safe. Now, anyone also coming to Nigeria would hear a couple of things. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. not safe. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's Boko Haram. Yeah. Well, is there Boko Haram men. at the entrance of your house? Is there Boko Haram by your estate? Mm -hmm. Any tourist should also know where not to go yeah. in any destination, yeah. and that's just yeah. it. So as a tourist, you must go with a tour company. The reason why you're going with a tour company is they're able to advise you on where to go and where not to go. If you go, because a lot of people say, I can do it on my own. Yes, but we can give you up-to-date information mm. on what's happening on ground. You know, and I'm happy the visa has been sorted. Um, in the past one month, it's been, we've been on a holiday we're having fun the visas are coming out on time so it's that destination uh, again it a week mm. which is fantastic mm. yes a week we've had times in the past that so he's done i must say you've done a fantastic job you know because getting the visas out in a week i can see his halo yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get the visa out in a week is it's a good step and you know for summer the price is good we're getting the visas out the packages are there, so that is the next summer destination we need to be looking at. You know, I'll never ask you about the people. Are yeah. they hospitable? They are. They are quite friendly, always smiling. They love to dance. So remember, they love to sing. So in any situation, they're all singing and having a party. So they're loving, they're nice. I mean, I have a lot of South African friends, yes. I have a South African sister-in-law. Uh-huh. What does she do a lot? Dancing. Oh and she has that uh, South African, you know, Music. EKB. Okay, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> she loves to swing it around mm. and she loves clubbing all the time. Yes. You know? So, I mean, a typical, if you're also religious, you, if you're Christian, there are churches around in South Africa. So you feel at home. You're right at home. You have your Monday to Friday holiday, Saturday you're going out of town, Sunday you're back. And it's also, a good, I notice a lot of people like it for the bachelor's eve, the hen nights, you know, a couple of that. So. I see. Mm. 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 Okay. I guess we'll have to... Anchor it here yeah. today. Thank you very much for coming to talk to us about um, South Africa, especially Thank this you. summertime. And we hope that um, some of the viewers would actually find it as an inviting destination. We can do that with a million. All the luck in the summer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, Tekiso, um, that name is uh, a bit long, isn't it? <laughs> Rakolojani. Tekiso Rakolojani, regional manager, South Africa Tourism West Africa, as well as uh, Mrs. Fumi Faloui, MD Wantra. One travel actually a travel agency. Thank you very much. Sunrise will be right back after the short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're talking creativity and entertainment industry. Again. Us. Again. <laughs> okay, so during his visit in 2018, the French president Emmanuel Macron recalled that developing collaboration between Nollywood and the French industry is one of the priorities of his embassy. The embassy has already supported events like NITV, that uh, French Days during AFRIF. It will have 20 French professionals coming for this event. It receives sponsorship from Nigerian partners, and we are thankful. Its goal is to have a French-Nigerian co-production in the movie sector. So how is all of this happening? The French Embassy is organizing a first French-Nigeria co-production workshop taking place in Lagos. How is that happening again? Well. We have people in the house that will help us understand exactly what that relationship is going to look like. And to help us is Johan Taluanu, who is the audiovisual attaché at the French Embassy. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Also here is Ijoma Ona, founder of the Nigeria International Film Summit. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. It's good to have you again. Yeah. Um, Johan, bonjour. Bonjour, monsieur. Ça va? Ça va bien et vous? Okay. Uh, let's not go to 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 <laughs> Maybe we'll go. Uh, I don't want to. Want to, want to do an <laughs> okay, so um, you are this idea. Tell us about this Nigeria, trying to Nigeria co-production in cinema. For sure. So um, I've been in Nigeria for um, now two years, and really our purpose is how we can work with Nollywood. Nollywood is not in France. Mendoboni can really picture what is Nollywood.
It's not in France. It is not yet because we have uh, like channels dedicated to Nollywood, like Nollywood t uh, TV. Okay. Um, you have festival like Nollywood Week. Um, but uh, still, we are working but not collaborating. Like we don't make movies together, which I think is a big step because Nollywood is the second industry in the world. France is well known for its movies, but we never really connected in terms of production, co-production. Oh. So we wanted to go further. Okay. Oh. Uh, um, Ijoma, that idea, does it tie into what you do? Absolutely. Um, like you said, um, I've been working, we've been working with the French Embassy to host um, the NITV Summit in Paris every year. Um, so we received um, the support in terms of bring, and it's all about bringing French and Nigerian companies together in television to see how we can collaborate. So, and you, you know, I also organize the Nigerian International Film Summit, which is a B2B event. It also brings, uh, tries to build bridges between Nigeria and other countries. So yes, it makes a lot of sense that at this time, we're having the French Nigerian Cinema Days and it's purely a B2B platform where you have professionals, distributors from France, you have producers who are coming to, to Lagos to see the possibilities, to have conversations on how we can begin to uh, work together. Producers from French producers should be able to work with Nigerian producers. French movies should be distributed and exhibited in Nigeria cinemas and also opening an opportunity for our films to also travel out and be seen in France, beyond television or... A, a Subtitled, of course. No, dubbed. Ah. Yes, fully dubbed. It's, I mean, it's massive, okay. yes. Um, in terms of our industry and our content, the potentials are massive because both in France and even in Francophone Africa, it's been massive um, dubbing of our content into French, so because... It's, uh, it's quite appreciable, and the demand and appetite is so high. Mm. So bringing, coming together, having the two countries come together to, to explore um, the possibilities to begin to work closely in production and distribution, I think it's very, very key. And that is what we, that's, that's my own passion, to, to, to drive business between Nigeria and other countries in the area of film. So, take a bow, Nollywood. Ah. <laughs> so, tell us about this workshop. Um, I think um, what the, the, the co-production workshop, we have about 10 selected projects. So the way it happens, we uh, launch a call for proposition in December. We see about 50 projects from Nigerian producers. Then, we the um, select committee to reduce to 12. On the other side, we have 10 French producers. The idea is a pitching session. And once the pitching is done, we have B2B meetings. How French and Nigerian maybe could work on certain projects. Because, you know, Nollywood is a very big industry, and um, they don't need us to make movies. But how to get one step further, to be in big film festival like Cannes, to have international recognition, is something that I think French could help with. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's what it is. Um, what we're trying to do here is to see how we can live, like you said, it's about leveraging on strength. Okay, mm -hmm. Nollywood has its own strength among the diaspora, you know, I mean, definitely, it's something that um, people want to see, taking it a step further and see how we can reposition ourselves in international uh, mm -hmm. scene and in, in the market. I mean, locally, we, we have done well, but we, got, we are saying that we need to take it a step forward. Mm -hmm. Have we had um, plenty of showings at the Cannes Festival? No, we've never uh, had any in Hollywood yeah, films. It's, it's one thing that no, I think we had um, uh, Genevieve's movie? No. No. It was in oh. Toronto. That Toronto. Was, that was in Toronto. Yes, that was like, Toronto. The thing about Nollywood is that it's never a movie been in Cannes. We've been away from Senegal, Kenya, Mali, but never Nigeria. So, you know, it's something that we, I would like to work before I leave in Nigeria, to have a Nigerian movie selected in Cannes. That's yeah. a shame, really, because we're, we're bigger than Senegal, ah, we're bigger yeah. than Kenya. But it's not I the mean, same industry. Yeah, it's not the same. It's not the same kind of movies. Yeah. Um, okay. So we are, more commercial, we are more commercial driven, mm -hmm. you know, yes. And then so, uh, but um, it's something, it's not impossible. It's something that we are all looking forward to. I was at Cannes Film Festival in last month, yes. And then um, 
uh, interesting. The it was a Senegalese film that won the Grand Prix. Yes, the Grand Prix. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> filmmaker from Africa, yeah, in Senegal. Yeah. I mean, I'm embarrassed. Yeah, you don't need to. <laughs> you want the that workshop when it hap that's happening. That when is it happening again? So it's second and third of July. The workshop is on the third in the morning, but the first day is mostly panel discussions. We have French and Nigerian professionals uh, talking together, distribution, production, exhibition. Now we have French companies building cinemas in Nigeria. So, you know, we are very, very connected to Nigeria. Okay, so that's it. That's what it looks like out there. Exactly. Okay, French and Nigerian. And it's at the Alliance Francaise, Mike Adenuga Center. Okay. So, okay. second and third. Exactly. First, what, where's the, the Alliance? Second? Alliance is on Ikoi, is in Ikoi, Kingsway, and Osborne. Okay. It's the brand new one. Okay. The brand new one. Mm. Nine hours one. Now, but the first day is, you say, panel discussions. Yeah. Exactly. But the workshop is on the third. Exactly. In the morning. Yeah. Who are those speaking at that? Yeah, that's it. Uh. Ah. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. So, um, on the first day, um, we have opening with the French ambassador. Then we have a mix of producers, um, people from a TV station buying Nigerian content, like mm -hmm. Canal Plus. If you don't know, Canal Plus is like the DSTV mm. of, of France. Mm. And um, uh, all over the day, we have people from the whole chain of production, really, from financing, production, distribution to exhibition, and from both Nigerian and French side, really connecting them together. Okay. Exclusive, like, a connection. So at the end of the day, what do we hope to draw out of this, Ijoma? Okay, so, um, like um, Johan said, French companies are making very massive incursions into Nigeria. I'm sure there's a lot of potentials that have been seen. Um, you're going to have a French company building cinemas here very soon. And then you're also going to have um, uh, possibilities to co-finance films. So those are the things that um, we are, because everything, for me, every agenda has to be consciously driven. Nothing just happens on its own. So there must be that conscious effort, you know, bring people together and have... Because the film business is an ecosystem. When you say Nollywood, for instance, the first thing that comes to mind is production. Production is just one Small aspect, part, yeah. you know? And so we need to also look at the cinemas. We're also having them, you know, having those conversations. We need to know... I think a, a French movie was released last year by Silverbed. Or two years ago. Yeah, it's, it's remember last year they acquired three French movies. Yeah. And uh, Film House is also a film one uh, buying French movies. Yeah. Like, you know, we're trying to see that it's not only about Nollywood and Hollywood, how other countries, not only France, could be on the market. Because you have more and more cinemas, the numbers are, you know, growing. They're growing. Yeah. Yes. Bigger yes. and bigger and yes. all over the country, not only Lagos. Yes. So yes. who can, who should attend this conference, this workshop? Um, so it's really oriented to Nigerian professionals who for, in the production side is people that want to do co-production because co-production is, is a bit different than you know regular movie. You have to work with people from different culture, from mm -hmm. different expectation, and also people who have interest in uh, international, spa um, international um, I would say, conception of the cinema. Mm. How, how do they register? Well, right now, <laughs> which is, yes, it's actually closed. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We're a victim of our success, I would say. You're a victim? Of our success. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a limit and you have reached that limit. Yeah, because... Oh, far, um, far, 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 yes. It's wow. uh, in the Mike Hanega Center, Alliance Francaise, there's a cinema hall, mm -hmm. and we're trying to squeeze everybody, so okay. we're, we're yeah. trying to limit. Limited number, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so nobody else can come. Try. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can come if you want. I invite you. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're my guest. Well, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, in France, you have people sit, don't mind sitting like in the cinemas, you know, on the staircase and stuff like that. So. You know, we, we're actually looking for every, everywhere to maximize every single space because a lot of people actually want to come. Mm. But, and then it's also not a paid for event. Mm. And then we also have to prioritize in terms of do we want numbers or we want people who are actually, you know, in the business because, mm. you know, it's a huge, huge, massive industry. Mm. So we need to also make sure that uh, people who actually have um, 
core interests and investments are, are the, the right yes are the one them. yes yes you you want, i can imagine the amount of interest that this will generate uh, when one thinks about the kind of support that Kunle Atalaya got for, you know from the french government of, the french of embassy for his um, mm -hmm. movie mm -hmm. you know when air france and all yeah. that got involved so that would have urged some other people I've got to be the one they're supporting next time. So I've got to get involved. I've got to let them see what I'm doing as well. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Kune created a path um, with uh, CEO and the way he works with Air France. Yeah. But we have so many filmmakers right now. You know, you mentioned Genevieve a bit uh, earlier that it's quite successful with uh, what she did in Toronto and with Netflix. So we have all this generation that are going beyond Nigeria and we'd like to be happy to work with them. Hmm. Well, so um, 2nd and 3rd of July at the Alliance Francaise at 9 Osborne Road, Ikoi, um, the uh, Nigeria-French Nigeria cinema workshop co or co-production workshop. Uh, but don't worry, they said registration is full. <laughs> <Don't laughs> registration. So, I don't even so think if, about if, it. <laughs> if you're not already there, then you're not there. <laughs> But your name isn't Alero. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. But um, AJ, before we let you go, what has it been like, the film business in Nigeria? Oh, great. Um, I think it's, it's, it's something, and for me, it's something I've been working on to push out information about the film business in Nigeria. So if you'll permit me to just share some of the information here. Um, well, this is not so correct. As, as at 2018, we did this compilation because we actually um, uh, host the Nigerian International Film Summit every November in Los Angeles during the F AFM. And what we try to do here is to see how we can help people understand our industry. We do not have, um, um, we do not have like the, 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 the kind of number of screens that we want considering our population right and so it's important for people who to understand the real facts that can make pull investors to come in and say okay we want to invest in this in the film industry so um now you you can go to the, the facts I see the okay facts. okay you can actually <laughs> <laughs> so right now you can actually go to so the facts are actually on you have the cinema exhibitors um association of nigeria they have their website I think seen Nigeria.com. So every week you see how much is made in Nigerian box office, mm. because that is more current than what I wanted to share. So I okay. think it's more. I think that would be more updated. So they're making quite a lot. Well, quite a lot is relative. Well, compared to, <laughs> to where we're coming from, yeah, compared of course. To where we're, we're of course. The cinema industry has grown. Is it a boost? Would it encourage more filmmakers to get into the business? Well, the thing is. Filmmakers, I, I, like yesterday I had a conversation with three different people. So you need to understand as a filmmaker what, you know, the things that needs to be done. It's not just enough to make a film. So there's also marketing mm -hmm. that is involved. Mm -hmm. And then there is a life after cinema. Cinema is just like very short run, two months. So after cinema, what happens? You see? So for filmmakers, most times... Um, you know, they are driven, some people are driven by passion, but for you to build a business out of it, you must make a film, go back and make another one, and go back and make another, another one. one. Then that yes. is how you're building a business. So it's not just enough to, oh, my dad can finance me, and then you have no understanding about the matrix. What are the things that are making people earn 400 million in the mm. cinema and all that? So it's important we have the right um, understanding of the film business before we go into it. You have? Your final words. Well, first of all, thanks again for having us. And this event is the first on its own, and we are looking forward to have a second one and many more. But really what we're looking forward is to have French Nigerian movies being done in the next coming years, month, because I think we can do uh, really great things together and be in Cannes. You know, Cannes is one example, but being in Cannes, it means a lot for a filmmaker and for a country. Sure. And this year, Senegal, because they were selected, you know, they, made, they were very big in Cannes. Last year was Kenya. Mm -hmm. So why not Nigeria next year? Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, you. Uh, Victor, I really said I should tell you that um, there are French graduates in Nollywood also. So in case you want people who speak French <laughs> in movies, you can carry Anufoma and a Judith to come which and Which is a very huge possibility. Very yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're speaking with Johan.
Talwanu, uh, audiovisual attaché at the French Embassy, and Ijoma Ona, founder of Nigeria International Film Summit. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll be back in a moment for the home stretch, and she is a... Uh, she. Yeah.